Let's say I have the function f of x is equal to x minus 1 cubed. And I've restricted the domain uh, to be between minus 1 and 3, inclusive of minus 1, but not 3. OK, so let's say what I want to do is I want to find the inverse function, and I want to find the range and domain of that inverse function. OK, so first of all, I've got the domain of the original function. It would make sense to find the range of this function as well. OK, for that, I really need to know what this graph looks like. So let's try and sketch it. So this will look like x cubed, but translated one to the right. So x cubed will ordinarily look like this. So it's been translated one to the right. So let's try and draw it like that. OK. So there is one. That point is uh, when x is 0. So I would have minus 1. OK. Um, and let's call this point down here when x is minus 1. So that would be minus 1. And when x is minus 1, I get minus 1, take away 1, so minus 2 cubed, so minus 8. OK. And that's minus 1. Now, this point up here... Okay, so this point up here is going to be my end point of the graph. So that would be when x is 3. So when x is 3, I get 3 take away 1, so 2, 2 cubed, so 8. So that's 3, 8. Okay, and that's 3. So this is what my curve looks like. And I can identify the range. So that's my domain. And the range is going between minus 8 and 8. So minus 8 is less than or equal to f of x is less than 8. And that is the range of f. OK. So... Now for the inverse function. So in order to find the inverse function, I first of all write it as y equals x minus 1 cubed. We swap the x's and y's. So x is equal to y minus 1 cubed. We then rearrange this to get y equals. So cube root both sides. So the cube root of x is equal to y minus 1 and then add the 1 to both sides. So y is equal to the cube root of x plus 1. So this is my inverse function. f minus 1 of x is the cube root of x plus 1. OK. So I need to be thinking about what this looks like. Um, but also need to be thinking about, well, once I know what it looks like, I can work out what the domain range is. Now, from previously, what we've identified is that a function and its inverse are reflections of one another in the line y equals x. So, the line y equals x, well, given the scale of my graph, would probably look something, I don't know, something like that. OK, so here's my y equals x. OK. This was always going to be a bit fiddly to draw, but I'll try. OK. So 
if it's a reflection in this line, then I can identify some key coordinates here because that point is that point there, okay, in the reflection. That point is going to be that point there, so there's one on the y-axis. So I know that that piece of the curve is reflected, so that piece of the curve will look something like that, okay? Now, this is where the curve changes its direction. So the curve must also change its direction here. Go through that point, because that's where it must cross. So it's a little bit difficult to draw, as you can see. Okay, must keep on, mm -hmm. can't go back on itself because of the angle that I've drawn it there. Quite difficult to do. Something like that, okay? Something a little bit better. So, it'll have this end point up here, and that point must be a reflection. Now, I haven't drawn mine very accurately, and it's quite difficult to do. Um, so, that point 38 must be reflected in the line y equals x, and so must be the point 83. Okay? Now, down here, this curve continues through, and so it ends at this point down here. Minus 1 minus 8 must be reflected in this line y equals x and becomes minus 8 minus 1. Okay? And so, knowing the turn, those points, those end points, I can now identify the domain and range of the inverse function. So the domain is going from minus 8 up to 8, including 8, but not including, including minus 8, but not including 8. And the range is going between minus 1 and 3. So including minus 1, but excluding 3. Notice how my range is written with f minus 1 of x. So, what are we noticing? Well, as you can see here, the domain of the inverse function actually uses precisely the same identifiers as the range of the original function. So, the domain of the inverse is the range of the original. And the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original. OK? And so they switch. Because of that nature of, of uh, being reflected in the line y equals x, the domain and range switch. So in actual fact, if I knew the domain range of the original function, I could already identify what the domain and range of the inverse function was going to be before I knew what it actually was. Okay, well, before I actually knew that it was the cube of x plus 1. I didn't need to know that in order to identify these. Okay, so it is important to know how uh, the domain range can be linked with functions and their inverse and to be able to find these.